There's a government-owned mosque in the heart of the Pakistan capital, a known den of extremism, whose troublesome imam is wanted by police. The imam has called for the overthrow of the government and the establishment of an Islamic Sharia state in Pakistan. Burqa-garbed female students in the madrasa attached to the mosque pledged allegiance to the self-declared caliph of the Islamic State in a video. We pray for you every night here in Pakistan, they said. The students implored the Islamic State militants to annihilate America and her allies and then to install the Islamic State Caliphate here in Pakistan too. The authorities here took no action against them or him. And in more than a year since the warrant was issued, the authorities have failed to arrest the imam of the Red Mosque here, Mullah Maulana Abdulaziz. Many here say that's because he's the spiritual leader of the Pakistan Taliban. Here's what happened last time they moved against Mullah Maulana. Nine years ago, in a week-long siege of the mosque, around 100 people were killed. Maulana had long threatened vengeance. In their latest atrocity, a faction of the Pakistan Taliban attacked this university, killing more than 20 students and professors. The Pakistan Talibs are separate from their Afghan namesakes, but they too evolved from the Mujahideen funded by the West to fight the jihad against the Soviet occupation of Afghanistan in the 80s. Now, like a jihadi Frankenstein, they've turned their wrath on Islamabad and turned Pakistan into a nexus of terror. Well, it's unfortunate in the sense that we are just next door to Afghanistan. And uh, we have a famous saying that uh, if Afghanistan have a flu, the sneezing starts here. And here, what do they want? Sharia? Well, this is what they say. Islamic law. This is what That's they it. say. This is what they say, but uh, I don't think uh, that is the real motive. The real motive, I think, is just to grey power. It's the ultimate nightmare. Nuclear-armed Pakistan overrun by this lot. This is Umar Mansour mastermind of the recent attack. Here he says they did it because the university prepares future political and military leaders, lawyers and judges of what he calls the dirty satanic democratic system. Mansoor threatened to continue attacking Pakistan's schools and colleges. That's why they've all remained closed. It was Mansour who did this too. The attack on the army school just over a year ago in which 150 were killed, almost all of them children. Faced with public revulsion, General Rahil Sharif, the army chief, masterminded an intensification of the counter-offensive against the Pakistan Taliban. It's become the stuff of legend. Last month, the army boasted that in just over a year, they'd killed nearly 3,500 Taliban, arrested 21,000, and destroyed more than 800 hideouts. General Sharif is by far the most popular and powerful man in Pakistan, and the military's crowing. I believe that Pakistan military has an upper hand. You know, the operation started in June 2014 and if you see the progress of how we dislodged them from their sanctuaries, from their bases, from where they were carrying out things uh, without any hindrance, all that has gone. Their sanctuaries have been destroyed and they do not have a base to fall back to. But the fighting displaced more than one million people. 500 soldiers were killed, 2,000 wounded. Journalists were kept out of the war zone. The moratorium on the death penalty was lifted and military courts introduced. These four men were picked up the day after the most recent attack. They were paraded in manacles 
and Lieutenant General Asim Bajwa, a very senior commander, branded them terrorists. Do you believe that civil liberties in this country are being eroded in your hunt for the Taliban? Well, let me ask the same question to you. You know, what is your government doing in the UK? You're going after terrorists and you're ma making sure that your people are safer. They can continue with the routine life. Do you ask your state that why are they going after terrorists? I mean, you have to go after a monster. So what do you do? And I think state of Pakistan is taking care that this does not impinge on the civil liberties of people. No operation can be judged by the number of people that are killed and the number of people that are arrested. I think we cannot sacrifice rights of the people while we are on this uh, uh, operation. We have reports of torture and it's endemic. People who have been in prison for years, people who have disappeared and then laws are made to sort of whitewash this illegality. Why are we fighting the terrorists? Because they're fighting our civilized norms. But if we are going to undermine our own civilization and our own civilized values, then what's the point of fighting the terrorists? There's a boy's bike that hasn't been ridden for more than a year in a house in Peshawar. Too much for Tufail, whose eldest son, Sher Shah, was 17 when he was gunned down at school by the Pakistan Taliban. His sudden, violent death in the bloodbath has shattered this family. The boy's mother is still in deep shock. I promised my brother I'd become a doctor and that I would treat the poor free of charge. We were great friends. I miss him too much. I want to say to children, to students, that they should study and defeat terrorism through education and knowledge. I was out of town when I heard about the university attack. I was so disturbed I couldn't even drive. It felt like it was a repeat of the school attack. After that, we had hoped things would improve, but since the university attack, our fears have multiplied. They've started again, and we're worried. Over the anniversary of the Peshawar school attack, the Pakistan army released this music video. The children wear the Peshawar army school uniform. He must be delusional to think he can kill my dreams, the song goes. He thinks he's fierce, but he picks fights with children. I'm bigger than him. Pakistan spends one-fifth of its national budget on defence. That's ten times what it spends on education. And most of it goes fighting an enemy spawned at the end of the Cold War, created and funded by the Western world which has now turned on its own. The West, meanwhile, has left the people of this country of 180 million to live with the hideous consequences, and they're struggling. Jonathan Miller, Channel 4 News, Pakistan.